Early in Drosophila embryogenesis, a strip of epithelial cells along the ventral midline constrict their apical surfaces so that they collectively invaginate to form a ventral furrow. This apical constriction is driven by pulsatile contractions of the motor protein myosin 2, as Claudia Vasquez, a student in Adam Martin's laboratory at MIT, explains. The apical area will decrease in size as a coalescence of myosin appears in the medial domain, and then the apical area is stabilized as the myosin is remodeled, and then the cycle repeats, and that's how you get the stepwise constriction of the cell. Myosin is activated by an upstream pathway that includes the Rho1 GTPase and its effector Rho kinase, or ROC, which phosphorylates myosin's regulatory light chain to promote the motor's oligomerization and ATPase activity. Vasquez et al. noticed that ROC also showed pulses of accumulation that coincided with the coalescence of myosin 2 in the medioapical domains of apically constricting cells. This suggested that, rather than simply activating myosin 2, ROC might dynamically regulate the motor's pulsatile behavior. So the idea was to test what would happen if you uncoupled the activation of myosin from its upstream regulators, namely rho kinase, but also myosin phosphatase, which would be expected to reverse that phosphorylation and result in myosin turnover. To uncouple myosin from its upstream regulators, Vasquez et al. generated GFP-tagged versions of the regulatory light chain spaghetti squash, in which two key residues targeted by rho kinase, threonine 20 and serine 21, were replaced by either phosphomimetic glutamate residues or non-phosphorylatable alanine residues. The researchers then observed the dynamics of these myosin mutants in Drosophila embryos lacking most of their endogenous spaghetti squash molecules. So when we make a phosphomimetic mutant, which activates myosin but cannot be directly phosphorylated by ROC, the myosin is much broader in terms of its accumulation across the apical domain and doesn't appear to undergo a coalescence event. Uh, and also with the actin, you don't see a clear coalescence in that strain. In addition, in the phosphomimetic mutants, uh, you no longer have these really defined assembly and disassembly cycles, such that you have a much more continuous accumulation of myosin. As a result, the apical domains of cells expressing phosphomimetic myosin mutants constricted continuously rather than in a stepwise manner. So some of the other mutants that Claudia made were mutants that decrease myosin phosphorylation, such that you would expect to not be able to fully activate the myosin motor. And with those, what we saw is that you're still able to get a polarized accumulation of myosin, but these mutants also do not pulse. So we really think that it's a transition between low to high and then maybe back to low activity of the myosin motor, which is required to get these cycles of assembly and disassembly that are important for this ratchet-like constriction of the cell. In other words, myosin's phosphorylation state must be dynamically regulated to determine the correct organization and timing of contractile pulses. Vasquez et al. therefore examine the localization and function of myosin phosphatase, which opposes the rock-mediated phosphorylation of myosin 2. The myosin binding subunit of the myosin phosphatase, or MBS, localizes apically with myosin and uh, with rokinase. But it has kind of a more diffuse staining, maybe contributing to the coalescence of myosin in the medial domain. The other results that we have with this protein is that when we knock down MBS, we are able to phenocopy the phospholymetic myosin mutant. And so we also see a reduction in the coalescence of myosin, and we don't see any pulsing or any assembly and disassembly of myosin. So you need coupling between rokinase and myosin phosphatase with the myosin 
to get this incremental apical constriction. Why cells prefer to constrict their apical surfaces incrementally is unknown, so Vasquez et al. examined embryos undergoing continuous myosin accumulation and apical constriction. We were interested in whether or not the pulsing could be important for coordinating cell shape changes and balancing forces across the tissue. So during apical constriction, myosin forms the supracellular meshwork, and this generates uh, epithelial tension across the tissue as it invaginates. And what we consistently see for every mutant that disrupts the pulsing is that As the tissue is invaginating, you start to see stretching of structures in this cytoskeletal network, and we can also see tearing events as cytoskeletal structures in neighboring cells separate from each other when you don't have pulsing. This suggests that incremental apical constriction helps coordinate and balance tissue-wide forces during epithelial invagination. So we think that pulsing results from dynamic increases in myosin phosphorylation that could lead to a local increase in myosin activity and coalescence near the center of the apical domain. And then something sort of switches the balance so that myosin phosphatase can dominate and lead to a disassembly and remodeling. And this leads to a much more dynamic incremental constriction of the cell. We think that somehow having the dynamics is important for coordinating contractility across the tissue so that you're able to maintain stable cytoskeletal connections as the tissue is invaginating. And we're very interested in following this up to try to determine what is it about having a less dynamic constriction that sensitizes the tissue to these tearing events that occur during the invagination. In the meantime, however, you can learn more about how dynamic myosin phosphorylation regulates contractile pulses and tissue integrity during epithelial morphogenesis in the paper by Vasquez et al., published in the August 4, 2014 issue of the Journal of Cell Biology.